This lesson shows how to create an Azure virtual machine and deploy Power Automate desktop flows to it. I'm Anders Jensen, a Microsoft MVP. Let's learn some Microsoft Power Automate desktop. To set up a virtual machine in Azure, you navigate to portal.azure.com. Click the hamburger menu up here to the left, then click Virtual Machines. Now click Create. Use Azure Virtual Machine. You will need a subscription to create a virtual machine. We'll create a new resource group. So click Create New here. I'll choose the name My VM Group. You're free to choose whatever you prefer. Then click OK. Then we'll give our machine a name. Again, choose the name you want. I chose Demo VM. The region. Here you will choose the data center nearest to you. Since I live in Northern Europe, that's what I go with. Then we'll need an image. Here we can click this drop down and see some predefined one or click all images. We can choose a Windows Server, a Windows 10 or a Windows 11, which is the one we will go with in this tutorial. Here I click select. I will go with Windows 11 Pro version 22H2X64 generation 2, but feel free to choose otherwise. So I click here and that one is chosen. Scroll a little bit down. Then we will need to choose a size. Here I'll click see all sizes. And here I can recommend to choose from the most used by Azure users if you're unsure what you want to choose. It could look like this. Just pick this one here. I'll pick one with 16 gigabyte RAM and I'll take this D4S3. The D series are great for a purpose. So I click here and then I'll click select. Then we'll need a username and a password for the virtual machine. I'll choose the username called Anas Jensen Org and I'll paste in my password here. Scroll a little bit down. We also need to choose the public inbound ports. So drop down here. The RDP on port 3389 enables remote connection. And we will also enable the HTTP 80. That is the default network port used to send and receive unencrypted web pages. Now we can scroll down. Confirm that you have a Windows license. Click review and create. Here you will see the price for the machine and disk that we chose. It is 1.49 Danish kronos per hour. That is when the virtual machine is active. That means that once we start the machine in a little while, this will be deducted from your credit. Now click create and your virtual machine will start deploying. This will take probably around one minute. So I'll fast forward the video. Is this video helping you? Then you can help me by giving it a thumbs up. That's it. Click go to resource. Go up here and click this connect drop down. Choose RDP. Download RDP file. Over here, I'll say keep. Then I will open up my downloads folder. I have it here. I'll cut it out to my desktop or somewhere else where I can keep it. To connect to my virtual machine, I just double click this demo VM RDP that I just downloaded. Choose don't ask me again for a connection to this computer and I'll click connect. Here I'll need to fill in my username and password and you need to have a local host backward slash in front of your username. This was the username that we created before. Password, you also chose that during the setup. So I'll paste that in. 
I'll click OK. Again, I'll say don't ask me again for connections to this computer, and I'll click yes. Now your virtual machine is being prepared. Choose your preferred settings. I'll just untick all of this, but feel free to customize it as you want. And I'll click accept. You now have your own virtual Windows 11 machine. Let me go to Edge. And here I'll just start without my data, start without this data, untick this and confirm and start browsing. So I go up here, type in speedtest.net and click enter. Accept and we will click go here. This is just for testing how fast the internet connection is on this machine. So pretty fast. Let me close this edge browser again. Yeah. So let's pause this. I will log out by clicking Alt F4. And then I'll click OK. This will log me out. I can minimize this. Then I go back to share. Again, if you are not on the home page, we can always find this hamburger menu. And then we can click machines. Click here. Now click stop. Say yes. This will take a little bit of time and then the virtual machine will be stopped. That means that you don't pay the fee. You will pay a small fee for storage load. At some point, the status will be stopped. We can also delete the machine. That is just to click delete. I force delete and then type yes in here. And delete. Since I'm going to use my machine, I will start it again. Let's connect to our virtual machine again. I find my demo VM RDP and here it remembered the username. So I just have to fill in my password and click OK. To be able to run Power Automate desktop flows on my virtual machines, I first need to install the machine runtime. So I open up an Edge browser still on my virtual machine. Then I go to Google and I'll search for download the Power Automate desktop installer and click enter. Choose the first non sponsored link. It says install Power Automate. Scroll a little bit down to download the Power Automate installer. And click it. That will download the installer. Once it's download, we run the file that is an executable file. Then the Power Automate installer will open. Click Next. Here we will not install the Power Automate for desktop. That is important. We don't need that since we will develop our flows on our own machine. What we need to install is the machine runtime app to connect to the Power Automate cloud portal. That one is needed. If your flows needs browser extensions such as Edge, Chrome, then we will also install the browser extensions and similar with Java applets for UI automation. Here you will say by selecting install, you agree to Microsoft's terms of use. Click install. If you installed one or more extension, you can enable it by clicking here. 
get the Microsoft Power Automate extension and enable it. That's it, I can close here and it says that we have installed it. You can also try to refresh if it seems stuck. If it says removed, it will be there. Now also go up here to extensions, manage extensions, and here we have enabled it. This one will be ticked, it needs to be blue. That is fine. Go back to the installation and click launch app. Here you will need to sign in to your Microsoft 365 tenant. That's the one you use with your Power Automate desktop. I fine. Put in my password and I'll click sign in. And I also need to third party confirm on my mobile. That's it. We are getting the things ready in the machine runtime. That's it. We have set it up here on our virtual machine. Now we will create an automation on our developer machine and ensure that we have two way communication. You can close this one down and we can also close Edge. So this is our virtual machine. I can just have it up here or minimize. It. So go to your Power Automate stuff. Here we will search for a launch new Microsoft Edge and drag it. Again, remember to have this extension installed on your virtual machine. We just did. So everything is. We will launch a new instance and we will just open up a L. So I'll say HTTPS google.com and then we'll do a search and we'll just do it directly here in the in the URL address. I'll search for Noma and then I'll save. If I try to run this automation, this will open up a new Microsoft Edge browser and search for Noma. Here I want to grab the ratings and that will be my simple flow to test the virtual machine setup. I go back to power stop. Here we will create two variables, an input variable that will be invoked when the flow starts. We started from the cloud. That could be the search term, so we can make this dynamic. And we will also have an output variable that will push a value back to Power Automate Cloud. And that way we can see that we have two way communication. Let's create the two variables first and then configure them. Over to the right in input output variable, click add variable, use input. This one here we will call search term. Like this. It will be used twice, so I just copy it from here. We will have it as text. The external name will also be search term, so I just paste it here. This will be search, the dynamic search term. Here it's Noma fixed, but we want it dynamic. Then we can use it here in launch new Microsoft Edge. If I double click it, I will delete the Noma. I click this variable picker and double click the search term. That's it. We will also have an output variable for the actual rating. Again, go up to input output variables, click this little plus and say output. We will call this average rating. Again, we copy it and paste it in here. Click save. So after we have launched it, we will extract some data, find and extract data from web page and drag it in here. Now open up your search results like this. This will get the live web helper. We will just pick the rating. Again, this is just a sample flow. So we can see that there's two way connection. What you do here is to right click the rating, extract element value and pick the text. That's it. The variables reduced, we will use the actual average rating that we created. Click this arrow, take the variable picker and double click the average rating. Let's also close the web browser again to clean up, search for a closed web browser and drag it in. 
then we'll click save. That's it. That's our simple flow that will check if we have two communication. Now save your flow and I gave it this name. Please like the video if it helps you. So that's the name that we'll be looking for in Power Cloud. Then we go back to browser and navigate to Power Automate Cloud. I can just type in powerautomate.com and I can click enter. That will take me to go up to create. We will just choose an instant cloud flow here, but you can choose a scheduled flow or a flow that runs by trigger. This is just the easiest one for demo purposes. We will call this flow two way communication test and we will choose to manually trigger our flow. I'll click create. We will then choose new step and then we will search for run a flow built with Power Automate for a desktop. So click this one here. So in desktop flow, I will select my flow, which was the please like the video if it helps you. Here I can choose between attended and unattended. Attended is when we are already signed in on the instance and unattended is so that our robot can run even though we're signed out. The unattended requires a license, which I don't have, but give this video a lot of thumbs up, then I might be able to afford it once my channel gets bigger. And of course, I'm just kidding. I'm very appreciative on all your support. But anyway, I click attended here. Then I click these three dots and under my connections, we need to make the connection. So click add new connection here. We will connect directly to the machine. In the machine or machine group, I choose my virtual machine, which is called demo VM. Then we also need a domain and username and password. To find the domain and username, I go to my virtual machine here. I go down to the start menu and then I just type CMD for command prompt. I click to open it. Once that is open, type who am I? And again, this is on my virtual machine. Here we get the domain and username. So what I do, I mark this, control C on my keyboard, that will copy it. Now let us just do this and minimize. So I paste in whatever is in my clipboard that was the domain and username we just got. Now we need a password and that is the password to your virtual machine. I pasted in mine here and I'll click create. And let me close this. This is just my password saver. Here we need a search term. That was the dynamic search term in Power Automate Desktop. Here I will choose my own company name, which is Anders Jensen Org. Let us go up here and save. And we can test this automation. So this will run on our demo VM. So when I click test here, I'll choose to manually test the flow. We will click continue and run flow. I can even inspect it here if I open. It will take a little while before it runs, but it will. Now we open up the browser. We navigate to the Anasensen org. It will scrape the data and now it closed the browser down again. So it actually ran on our virtual machine. Let me again do this. I'll click done and it says that our flu and successfully. If I go into the log, that is click this run a flow build with Power Automate desktop, we can see that we get the average rating back, which is 5.0 for this company. One thing that you might want to do now is to stop the virtual machine so you don't pay for it. Again, we go back to Azure here. Do a refresh if you're in virtual machines, otherwise find it by clicking these three dots, click virtual machines, mark it. And here you can choose to stop it. Then you will only pay for storage 
or we can also delete it by clicking delete, apply force delete, and I'll type in yes here, but beware, that will also delete the machine runtime setup on that machine. The key takeaway from this lesson is how to set up an Azure virtual machine, how to install Power Automate desktop runtime on it, and to deploy Power Automate desktop flows from Power Automate Cloud. Your next lesson is here, and the entire course is right here.